Let's get in to the predicted lineup and let's start off talking about the team news because Ange Postecoglou has been speaking in his pre-match press conference, but mm. there is no new injury news to note. But what is the injury news? Yeah, the only thing is Lacelso, who's back in training, but is probably not fit enough to make the squad for this weekend. He's out. Hill and Sessegnon still remain unavailable. But interesting um, comments on uh, Rodrigo Bentancor, he had to say, actually. And um, obviously, he was pictured... Um, training with the first team yesterday for uh, for a bit bit a uh, bit of the get um, the training session, and he said on Benzico, rehab is the toughest bit. You talk to any player, it's not just the work, but the solitary element of it. He was buzzing yesterday, and it was good for him to be involved. Fair to say, uh, he's got a fair bit of work to do, and great to have him involved. He was dejected, of course, when we had to pull him out after half an hour, which was always the plan. Um, so look. Baby steps on the moment for Rodrigo Bentancourt were coming up from a very serious injury. Seems as though uh, he is getting back to, you know, more time on the pitch with the team, but it's still a fair bit of time away from actually full team training. So, um, but glad to see him kind of making those steps towards full fitness. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to see the midfield get no injuries by the time he comes back as well, because it'll mean that we'll have a, a fully fit midfield. And I can't wait to see that kind of trifecta of Madison next to Ben Tanko with Basuma behind them. I think it's going to be magical that midfield. I really do. But in terms of the predicted lineup, we're going for a 4 3 3 formation as per usual. And in goal will be Vicario, who did get called up for the Italian team but saw no minutes. Yeah, I think it's going to be a fairly quiet day, I reckon, for Vicario. I'll be, I'll be, I wouldn't even be shocked if. Sheffield United failed to get a shot on target in this game, in my opinion, because of the control I, I predict us to have. So I think. It's going to be important, potentially, a bit of sweeper keeping if they go long to Cameron Archer on the counter-attack, but I anticipate a quiet day for him. In terms of the right-back toss-up between Porro and Emerson, seeing as Porro does have the shirt at the moment, we're going to stick with him, and he, there's no reason to take him out of the team because I think he's been brilliant. Yeah, I think so as well. And I think as well him even more in this game is going to be vital when he picks up the ball in the deep areas or out wide with his quality delivery we're gonna we just need that incisive quality that he brings um in on that right back uh, spot especially against a low block so i think para has to has to start next to him at right center back we did have a scare on international duty with argentina with that ankles um look like it did look like an injury it looked, i don't know how he's not injured from that to be honest but He's fine, he's been training, and he will be starting tomorrow, and that is Cuti Romero. Yeah, fantastic news that he's available. He saw him in training yesterday as well. It looked like a really bad challenge. Obviously, it uh, ended up in a red card for the Bolivian player, but fantastic news he's available. And I think it's going to be... Cr uh, I wouldn't say he's like crucial for this specific game, but it's just good to have him and c continue that partnership with Van der Ven. Spoilers. So there you go. On the left-hand side of the defence, it will be Mickey van der Ven, who also got called up for the first time to the Dutch team where he didn't see any minutes, wasn't in the squad for the first game and was on the bench for the second game. So a nice little rest uh, for Mickey van der Ven during international break. And I'm sure he'll be itching to get back on the pitch as mm. well, which is, and then maybe prove to the national team manager the next time he gets called up, he needs to be starting because he's had a great start to the season. Um, I'm, and I'm happy that he hasn't played a minute in internationals so he could be fresh for Spurs. So happy days. And then to make up that back four on the left-hand side is going to be a Destiny Udogi, who as well has been absolutely brilliant so far this season. And I feel like he's one of those players, if, if, if he gets injured, we're in big trouble. Yeah, obviously he pulled out the under-21s with a fever, didn't he? So I think in the very, uh, um, I think in the first week of the break, and in a way, it's probably played into Tottenham's hands because it means he's pulled out the squad and hasn't played any games, and he's fit and available for Spurs. So that's really good news um, that he's that he's going to be back and available, and he's been a massive part as well. And he's also, I think, having him in the team in this game to help break down that Sheffield United team is going to be crucial. So he has to get the nod. So let's run through that lineup with you guys one more time. It's Vicario in goal, Poro, Romero, Van de Ven, and Udo as our defence and I got a feeling like the impetus on a doggy and Poro to go forward as opposed to going back mm. should be a much more importance of this game but looking at the number six in the midfield is going to be Yves Bissouma who was pretty much very unlucky to miss out in the nominations for player of the month but 
hopefully that will just make him work harder and make him uh, get into it next month. And did one of the best assists you're ever likely to oh. see in the international break. Oh. Well. Brilliant to what see. What an assist. Dubs the keeper twice and then uh, was able to lay it on a plate for a teammate as well. Absolutely brilliant stuff from him. Uh, can't wait to see him back on, on the pitch. One of the most creative defensive mids in terms of his dribbling ability I've seen. He's so enjoyable to watch. He's full of confidence. Postacoglu talking about him being, you know, he wants him to be, be a bit more of a leader in the group as well, which is lovely to see. Um, so yeah, he has to start in this game. And then alongside him in midfield, the first player we're going to talk about on the right-hand side will be Pape Matasar, who also is having a brilliant season so far. One of maybe maybe outside of the Spurs would be saying one of the surprises of the season so far, how good he's actually been and how involved in the attacking play in terms of his goal contributions he's been already. Yeah, and actually, if you look at the stats, um, I've been looking at some of the underlying stats of Saar, and if you look at um, if you look at just midfielders in in a in a chart who've got combined expected assists and expected goals, like for just for centre mids, he's like near the top of, of for a, for a midfielder who has who has really high both. So he's performing really well. Obviously, he couples that te- uh, ability on the ball with his amazing uh, willingness to keep, to run the whole game and uh, good defensive stats as well. He's, but he's looked like he could be a very good all round midfielder. Still needs to like uh, he's still a bit rough around the edges. I feel so, but I feel like he's developed developing into a really top, top midfielder. And he's still only 20 years of age. And to be this good at this age is so exciting. And uh, yeah, he has to start again. Yeah, I think you're right in what you're saying about rough around the edges. But I mean, you cast your mind back to last season when we saw him. (laughs) He's a lot less rough around the edges Mm. than what we saw from last season, isn't he? And I think he is really growing and maturing into a really top player. And I think like for him to hold his own in the Premier League week in, week out, four games in a row now, or three games in a row because he didn't play the first game, I think is really special for a player of his age in the central midfield in the Premier League, looking like one of the stars of the Premier League. Just imagine when he's like 25 and he's a bit more mature and he's confident in himself like... I think he's going to be a star. And then to make up that midfield three will be our player of the month, James Madison. I say our player of the month, the Premier League player of the month, James Madison. Yeah, he's going to be crucial. I think he's the key in this game if we're going to make it an easy game for ourselves or it's going to be a big struggle. If he can like basically get a, either a free kick or a shot from outside the box and help unlock that uh, Sheffield United defence or even just like a killer pass from a deep position with his with his delivery and ability to see passes, um, I think that is going to be the key. I think if they're clever Sheffield United, they just make sure that Madison's on lockdown and, and not creating anything and that's going to stifle that's going to go a long way to stifling us but if he can get some joy in and around the penalty box then it could be a case of uh, being a much easier day if he can get any any luck all right, so that's a midfield three of Basuma Saar and Madison on the right hand side. Are we going to see a debut for Brennan Johnson? I don't think so. I think Dejan Kulisevsky will come straight back in uh, to the right hand side of the attack. And there's been some stats going around about Kulisevsky. I think he's run the most. He's ran the most out of anyone in the Premier League so far this season. For me, I think his quality on the ball has been lacking a little bit, but I'm liking the way he is taking on his man. I just feel like after he takes on his man, it's just a bit of a source of frustration for me. So I'd like to see him um, take that to the next level like we saw when he first came to Spurs. He's had a good international break though. Yeah, really good. Got, uh, what, two assists and a goal? Um, Yeah. I think during the internationals. He got man of the match in the first game and Mm. second game he was Sweden's best player in a 3-1 defeat and I think there were like five key passes in the second game so like he's he's playing well for me I've been pretty happy with the start to the season Um, I think in this kind of game as well I think he's got a bit more of the incisiveness than Brendan Johnson does Although Johnson has a bit, obviously, on the speed on Kulisevsky, but I think Kulisevsky is going to be the one to kind of pick the lock, which we need. So I think he has to be in the team. Up front is obviously, well, not obviously, but we're going to go for Hyung Min Son um, because he got a hat-trick in the last game, in the first game that he played as the number nine in this system. And Richarlison, to be fair, has gone overweight to, uh, to Brazil and not had great games uh, once again. But a worrying kind of comments coming out from him, him suffering psychological problems problems and stuff like that so we hope he can get the help and get back to full fitness as soon as possible but we do expect him to be in the squad yeah I think he'll be available but I think Son has to get the nod after the after that performance I do anticipate him having a lot more difficulty in this game uh compared to the Burnley game to try like getting the same amount of space and uh you know the center backs being a lot closer to him and as well the fact that they're going to be playing against the back three will naturally make it more difficult as well so it'll be interesting to see how he copes with that a different kind of challenge especially in the number nine position I hope that he does uh, drop deeper and goes for more long-range efforts because we just know how deadly he is from range 
and we need to make use of that tool because I don't really see him getting too much joy when in, in terms of his ability to run in behind in this game because I think the space is going to be restricted. But I think it's a good challenge for him to see how he can cope in this kind of situation. Yeah, absolutely. And then to make up that final 11 on the left-hand side, we are going to go for Manor Solomon. Had a really strong game uh, up at Burnley a couple of weeks ago and let's hope he can just follow on from that now. Yeah, again, I feel like maybe Perisic potentially is more suited to this game, but I think you have to start Solomon just off the back of a really strong performance against Burnley last time out. Um, again, with the lack of space. Also, also Solomon has a good long shot as well, cutting in from the left-hand side, able to whip into the far corner. I think he's going to have to try and make use of that um, that ability. He has to do that in this kind of game if we're going to help break down um, the Sheffield United team. I, again, he got two assists um, against Burnley. I still think he can be uh, more creative when it comes to his ability to create chances for others and his crosses in the box. Um, and, I, and I don't think he's going to get the same space he got against Burnley. But I think... His ability to shoot from range should also help us in this game. So I think he, he uh, gets another start. So let's run through that lineup with you guys one more time. So Vicario in goal, Pedro Porro right back, Destiny Doggy left back with Kuti and Mickey as the centre back options. Bisuma, Saar, and Madison make up the midfield three with Deki, Mano uh, supporting Hyung Min Son in the front line. Uh, so an, a completely unchanged lineup from the battering. We went up to that we gave Burnley a couple of weeks ago and I think all these players um, are on really good form at the moment so it's really hard to take any of them out of the team to be fair but it'll be interesting to see if we are struggling towards the latter stages of the game does he go with Richarlison does he go with Alejo Valiz does Brennan Johnson um, get a chance as well but in terms of the game are you sticking 3-0? 3-0 100%. Yeah, me as well. I'm going 3 0 as well. But I want to know your score predictions and your predicted lineups in the comments section below. And that is your predicted lineup for the Sheffield United game at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. 3 p.m. kickoff tomorrow.